Hey everybody, this is Nemo once again from the Overclock Magazine and today I'm bringing you the Gigabyte B550i Aorus Pro AX. Now this is yet another mini ITX motherboard based on the B550 chipset like I brought to you about two weeks ago. Now, when you look at something like power, because a lot of you care about power and so forth, at least I think a lot of you care about power, you're looking at a direct eight phase power design here with 90 amp power stages. So what does that mean to you? It means that you can power everything from your Ryzen 3 3100 all the way to your 5950X. Now, the CPU that I use to review this motherboard is the same one that's a 5800X. And again, I was able to hit exactly the same clock speeds I was on any other motherboard. So in that regard, it's fine, it's actually quite perfect. If you turn around to the back of this motherboard, or at least to the rear I.O., which is another interesting part of this board, is that you actually get two HDMI ports here and you only get one display port. Now, I think the second HDMI is kind of redundant because, I mean, let's face it, how many people are using APUs on this mini ITX board, especially since the 4000 series APUs never actually made it to retail. So you're basically sitting with features there that you can't generally use. The thing that I would have wanted to see more of instead of an additional HDMI is actually more USB because you only have six ports for USB here and one of which is the USB type C. Now at the rear I.O. as well, you also have the Q flash button so you can flash your BIOS and you also have the clear CMOS button. I don't know if it's the button, you have to like jab something into the little hole there. Now this is all good and well, it's not anything that you haven't seen before. Now if you turn to the back of the motherboard, there's a metal plate there that actually serves to cool some of the power components but it also just makes the board look nice and I think this is part of the things that give this motherboard such presence and give it so much heft that make it seem as if it's a better motherboard, at least in terms of design and just build quality than the previous one that I did. I'm not saying these things actually make a qualitative difference to your user experience, but it's nice to know that if you're gonna pay this kind of money, this is the sort of build quality that you are expecting. Everything else is pretty much general or rather what you would expect out of a high-end B550 based motherboard. So that means you get Bluetooth, you get Wi-Fi, you get 2.5G LAN, you get dual M.2. Now, obviously the M.2 socket on the top of the motherboard is wired directly to the CPU, which means that it has PCI Express 4.0 functionality. Now, another thing that's impressive about Gigabyte, and again, I speak to this from the 400 series on the Intel side and the entire 500 series on AMD side, is that Gigabyte has done a tremendous job at improving their memory compatibility and actually overclocking. In fact, I think in general, Gigabyte has certified the highest DRAM frequencies out of all of board vendors. If you look at their QVLs, you'll see that DRAM kits that are certified for 5,100. Now, if you overclock everything like I usually do, so what does that mean? You're gonna set an F-clock of 1,900 megahertz or 1.9 gigahertz. Then you're gonna set the memory to match, which is what DDR4 3800. Now you can dial in your timings and do all of that cool stuff and you can get super, super performance and in fact, as I mentioned in the previous review of the other mini ITX motherboard, it's that this board can actually do lower timings than that one can. It's only by one tick, but just that is enough to give it the performance edge at DDR4-3800. Despite all the hours I put into this motherboard and all the time I spent overclocking and tuning performance and so forth, it was fairly reliable for as long as I stayed at DDR4-3800 and lower. So here's the thing with this motherboard that I have to talk about. And these are the little things that might only apply to this motherboard that I used. Again, I have a sample of one, so I can't say that it applies to all motherboards, but this is what I experienced. A DRAM voltage of 1.35 volts, like a lot of XMP uh, supporting kits set, okay? you're actually gonna get a reading of 1.4, sometimes even 1.41, and this was consistent. So if you said 1.5, you're gonna get 1.56. If you say 1.4, you'll get 1.45. So I don't know where the extra 50 to 60 millivolts is coming from, but it's kind of off-putting that you'd have to deal with something like that. It's not a major issue, but just be aware of it. And if you do experience that, be aware that you're not the only one because I went through exactly the same thing. So if I'm gonna test uh, DRAM overclocking, I just set 4600 on my memory, set 1.5 volts, and then let the auto rules do what they need to do. And let's see if we can get into Windows and pass a test and so forth. I was able to do that on the Gigabyte motherboard. It worked at 4600. The thing is, you are not able to always post that. So if I power off the system, 
it will fail for the 600. And this kept happening to, to me multiple times and it's quite intermittent. So you never really know, is this 4600 working or is it not? Throughout the entire review process, I was never able to stabilize 4600 on this particular set of memory. So I cannot necessarily say that 4600 always works because it just generally didn't work for me. And I tried with another kit as well that isn't necessarily B die and I had exactly the same issue. So just be aware of that. And lastly, talking about this sort of thing is that I couldn't do anything above 1900 megahertz on the Infinity Fabric. I just simply couldn't. It would have been nice if I could do something like 2000 or basically test the limits of my CPU. And I know the CPU can do higher uh, frequencies in the Infinity Fabric than this motherboard was suggesting because on the other motherboard I could do as high as 2100 and I could run 2066 and eventually settled in 2000. Actually check out the review, you'll, you'll get to know all of the stuff. Now another thing that I noticed about this is that the clock gen on this motherboard only goes up in one megahertz frequencies or rather steps. So you cannot set something like 100.5 or any other sort of granularity outside of these one megahertz steps. There's absolutely no reason why this should be the case because Gigabyte has had this sort of granularity on other AM4 500 series chipset motherboards. So how it's missing here, I, I don't know. A lot of the times the experience with gigabyte motherboards falls apart in the software. And the first part of the software that you actually interact with is actually the BIOS. You can save profiles here like you can on any other motherboard, okay? And Gigabyte has this fantastic feature where setting your favorites in the UEFI is just, you just hit insert. Every time you hit insert, it'll add a star to whatever option, and then this will end up in your favorites. I find this very useful and I use it a lot of the time. However, it isn't quite useful when you're testing memory and you're gonna have to reset the BIOS a lot of times. You know why? Because every time you load a profile, your favorites disappear. So in that regard, I was kind of underwhelmed by what this motherboard was actually delivering to me. So if I had to rate this motherboard, if I had to give this motherboard a score, I would rate it quite high. But I would say to you, just be aware that there might be little issues that and little hiccups that you might come into or run into. These are software things, they're not hardware things, because as I said, the hardware is impeccable. But if you are in the market and looking for a solid quality motherboard that won't let you down, definitely consider this one. I mean, 3,800 Rand or $180 or so with new egg, you can't go wrong. So yeah, that's it for me. Remember, share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Take care and peace.